Okay, lesson number six. We're looking at equivalent fractions. Very, very important. So we're looking at equivalent fractions. What do I want you to be able to do by the end of today when you leave this room? I want you to re be able to reduce and enlarge fractions that have different denominators, but they're the same value. So we're just taking particular fractions, and I just want to make them the, the numerator and denominator larger, and I want to make it smaller. And we're going to need this when we get into ratio and proportion. So it's an important skill to have. So the first thing is we're going to revisit the concept of mixed fractions versus improper. <clears throat> so uh, mixed, mixed fractions are important, especially for any of the people here that are thinking about going into the trades, construction. They use mixed fractions all the time. So an example of a mixed fraction is 1 and 3 quarters. And we, did, uh, we represented these in the last video. An improper fraction improper fraction it means that it is represented with no whole parts okay so this one contains a whole part and that would be that right there and has no whole part. And we'll find that the numerator is bigger than the denominator. Okay? So if you look, that numerator in an improper fraction, it will always be a number bigger than its denominator. All right. So we're going to talk about switching back and forth between them. Uh, it's a skill that you, sh you have seen. So we're going to talk about change each fraction to a mixed number. All right. So our example, let's go to the 7 fourths. So if I want to go to a mixed number, I know that whatever my picture is or whatever I'm dealing with has four parts. Okay. So out of the top, that's how much has been used. So how many times can I take four away from seven? All right. So I'm looking at the top. So down here, we're going to go in a different color. And this is what I'm thinking. Okay. So I know that I have seven items. And I'm going to take away four. And it's going to leave me with three. Okay. So I took the numerator away from the denominator. So I know that if I take one whole part out of that fraction, what am I left with? Well, I'm left with three. So now I'm down to one and three quarters. So I've taken one whole out, so I took four out of four out of the fraction, and I'm left with three quarters. All right, let's see if I can make it a little bit clearer if you're still looking at it saying I'm not sure what you're talking about. What about ten thirds? Okay, so we know that there are three parts to the object or the whole part that we're talking about. So how many holes can be pulled out of here? So I know that um, if I do, if I take three out of the ten, so I have ten pieces in total, and I take three out, I'm left with seven pieces. So I took three out once, so that's a hole out. Okay? I have seven and I take another three out, that's a hole. Okay? I'm left with four, and I can still take a hole out. So four, take away three. So I'm taking out threes represent a whole pizza or a whole pie so i'm taking out amount whole amounts or entire amounts so that means i took three out three times how much is left at the end of this process there's one piece left over so that means i had three whole pizzas and another third all right so i took three whole pieces out Let's see if I can do one more for you here. <clears throat> so let's go um, 15 sevenths. <clears throat> so how much makes up a whole pizza here? Seven pieces are in a pizza. So I have 15 slices of pizza, and I take seven away. So 15 take away seven. I'll tell you that's eight. So if I have 15 slices of pizza... I have enough for one whole pizza, but I still have eight slices left. I take away seven more slices to get down to, uh, I have another pizza, and now I have one slice left over. So if I have 15 slices of pizza, I had enough for 
two whole pieces of pizza, two whole pieces of pizza, and I still have a little bit left over. I have one slice left, so I have a seventh of a pizza remaining. Okay, so that is changing from uh, changing improper fraction to a mixed fraction. So next, I want to go the other direction. So I want to change mixed numbers to fractions. This one's a little bit easier. So I have, say, 2 and 3 fifths. So to convert that to an improper fraction, I know I have two holes. So two holes, how many pieces would there be? Well, I know that each piece, each pizza has five slices, so I have two whole pizzas with five slices, so that means I have ten slices. And the previous fraction up above here, I already had three left over, so I end up with ten plus three over five, and that gives me... 13 fifths. Okay, so essentially what we're doing is we're multiplying the whole number, the 2, by the denominator, and that tells me how many whole slices there are. So that's where I got the 10, and then I had three slices still left over that I had to add in. Let's see if I can do it again and try explaining it a little bit different this time and help you out. All right. So here, I have three whole slices of pizza, or three, three pizzas. Each pizza has six slices. So how many slices does three pizzas have? Well, I know that three pizzas, and the, each one has six slices, so that means I have 18 slices, and that's just for, <clears throat> excuse me, that's just for my three whole. All right, so that 3 represents 18 slices. Now, I have one slice remaining, so I need to add that to the total. So I have 18 slices from the three pizzas plus one slice left over. That's over 6, so my final answer, oops, 18 plus 1. I have 19 sixths of a pizza. Okay. One last example. 5 and 2 thirds. How many holes do I have? I have 5. How many pieces are in each pizza? We're cutting our pizzas into 3. So that means that those 5 pizzas will give me 15 slices. Okay. I still have 2 slices left over. I don't have a whole pizza left over. So I take my 15 slices from the 5 pizzas, plus the 2 extra, put it over 3. So I have 17 over 3. Now, if you have a method that you learned previously, different method, by all means, continue to use it or go ahead. I'm just trying to give you a different look at how you can approach those questions. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now we're moving on to reducing to lowest terms. So this is where we need to... Divide numerator and denominator, numerator and denominator by the same number, same number. So an example, if I gave you four sixths. What number will divide both 4 and 6 evenly? So hopefully you're thinking the 4, I can divide it by 2, and I can also divide the 6 by 2. So 4 over 6 would reduce to 2 thirds. <clears throat> if I had 10, uh, 10 fifteenths, so I know I could divide 10 by 2, <clears throat> okay, but 15 does not divide by 2, so 2 is not the answer there. Uh, the 10 is divisible by 5, and I can also divide the 5 by 5. So 10, <clears throat> excuse me, 10 fifteenths becomes also 2 thirds. Third one, if I uh, have... 
uh, 6 over 9. The 6 I can divide by 2. But when I try to divide 9 by 2, it doesn't work. So I can't use a 2. 6 over 9, I could divide 6 by 3. And I can divide 9 by 3. And if I do that, I end up with 2 thirds. So we are looking for the biggest number that will divide numerator and denominator the same. Now the other thing I wanted to point out here, the pattern, and this leads to my final slide coming up here, or the final part of the note, two-thirds. What's equal to two-thirds? Well, the four-sixths, that was equal to two-thirds. The ten-fifteenths, or ten over fifteen, was equal to two-thirds. And the six over nine was equal to two-thirds. So all of these fractions are the exact same value. And that's what we call equivalent fractions. So those are equivalent fractions. And how are we getting them? If I multiply 2 by 2, I get 4. And guess what? 3 times 2 is 6. If I multiply the 2 by 5, 2 times 5 is 10. 3 times 5 is 15. So we just multiply numerator and denominator by the same value. So our final one is to get four equivalent fractions here. So for my first example, let's go with uh, 3 quarters. What would be an equivalent fraction? Just pick a number to multiply by. So for the first one, let's multiply top and bottom by 2. So 3 times 2 is 6. 4 times 2 is 8. There's one equivalent fraction. What else could we multiply by? Pick easy numbers. What else is easy to multiply by? 10 is easy to multiply by. So I'm going to multiply by 10. So 3 times 10 is 30. 4 times 10 is 40. So there's an equivalent fraction. What else could I multiply by? Oh, I'd love to see all those hands up. All right, I can multiply by 3, top and bottom. So 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 3 is 12. So 9 twelfths would work. And one more. What else can I multiply by? 5? Yep, 5 is easy. Good one, Tony. So 3 times 5 is 15. And the denominator, 4 times 5 is 20. So there you go. You just created four equivalent fractions from one single one. All right, so all we're doing is multiply, multiply numerator and denominator by the same integer. All right, and that will let you create as many equivalent fractions as requested.